What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we finished up fixing the broken frame. So the frame is fixed, reinforced, our track bar is done. And uh, the next thing that we gotta do is one, we gotta build new shock mounts because I didn't like the way the old ones were set up. So we have uh, new shock mounts that we're gonna build today. And then the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shore up this track bar mount, which is going to go from the track bar mount that we have currently all the way to the other side of the frame that's going to shore up the track bar mount to the other side of the frame so this is the original shock mount uh, you can see it's basically just a 316 plate that's flat and that goes up onto the frame right here and then i made a reinforcement plate that's supposed to spread the load out to the top corner of the frame here so you can see right here there's a crack forming in the frame all the way around here it's not that bad but obviously we don't want any cracks in this frame we're gonna cut this off uh, fix this little crack and then we're gonna end up plating in those couple of spots With the frame crack repaired, uh, we got a shock right here. Uh, I'm not changing up anything, the mounting location. I'm gonna keep it exactly where it was. I marked where the shock is supposed to be and we are right in line. So the shock just needs to go right in here somewhere. And then uh, we got our Barnes four wheel drive shock mount right here. We're gonna use our tube notcher from uh, Harbor Freight, our little cheap guy. We're gonna notch out the tube here and weld these plates on in the correct location and then start working on mounting everything back where it's supposed to be. So we have all of our pieces. We got our frame tie-in plate here. We got our extension piece for the shock mount. So we just gotta figure out where this is gonna go. I know right here, this is where the shock was originally mounted and uh, the bolt was right here so I could access the back of the bolt. So that's why I cut this out a little bit here. So we have our uh, shock tower right here. I have it at full droop where the shock is fully maxed out and I have it exactly where I want. So we just need to take our frame tie-in plates and this is gonna go basically like this. So we need to get this located where we want it and then I'm going to tack in this frame plate.
Well guys, I thought I was done, but I made a mistake. I overlooked something that uh, is kind of a big deal, unfortunately. Um, so the shock mount here, super solid. I love it. Super happy with it. I am off on this top bolt hole compared to my other bolt hole. It uh, looks like by about a half an inch. So the original bolt hole was about a half an inch higher, which the consequences of that, I mean, what are those you're asking? Well, in my case, I don't have limit straps. My shock is limiting the travel of the axle. So, uh, at full droop now, because of that half an inch, this coil spring is now loose in this pocket. So basically a half an inch up, this will be totally solid. So I set up this top bolt hole mount originally, so this would not come loose. The coil spring would not come loose. So uh, that's an issue, an oversight, a mistake that I made. I didn't even think about it. I stared at it. I have limit straps um, off of my TJ that I'm no longer using. Um, so and I have the old mounts that I had on the axle side. I was able to salvage them off the old mounts that I cut off. So I did a bunch of research and found these TMR Customs. These are adjustable clevis limit strap mounts. These things are freaking awesome. Uh, it was about $106 total. So these things are super cool. I got them now. So basically we're just gonna weld this top mount piece on our frame here and then weld the lower mount on the axle and then uh, we can adjust this which is super cool this is why I got this one uh, before I originally had this solid mounted on the TJ but as you know these things flex and stretch um, you no longer get the exact amount of uh, limiting that you want there are calculations and when I set up the TJ I did those calculations on the stretch so I made it a little bit shorter than it should have been so it stretched out to where I wanted it so these are stretched out already you're not new these are the old ones um, so it should be super simple unfortunately on both sides I'm gonna have to have it slightly differently set up because right where I want to weld this lower mount on the axle side I have my brake line it's a hard brake line I spent a lot of time making it and it's really big pain in the butt to make this and reroute it and everything so this side's gonna be off uh, compared to the other side on the axle side by about a half an inch which is not a big deal because I can just adjust the upper to make it the length that I want it which is why I like this This is super cool and uh, but the only important thing with that is because uh, of this shank right here all the stress is gonna be on this guy right here if you don't have it perfectly aligned so if you have it pulling sideways like a side load you're definitely gonna bend this for sure so you have to make sure that you have everything in line as close as possible so that's the plan uh, super simple and once we get done with that we should be good to go So over on the driver's side, we have our shock fully bolted in at full droop. And as you can see, this is the mistake I'm talking about. Pretty messed up. So let's change that. And we are now at full droop with our limit strap. I'm happy with this. Now we are completely 100% done with shocks, uh, limit straps. Everything is torqued, everything is good to go. So let's get back to the rear track bar frame brace that we're working on.
Here it is, just a super simple bar that goes from the track bar mount right here up to the other side of the frame, which you saw me just make. Now, I am, I'll be completely honest, I actually have mixed feelings about this now that I've been staring at it and thinking about it. Obviously, as this axle is moving up and down, this is going to be giving forces parallel, uh, which is going to help, in my opinion here but also this frame does move and it does twist and move around so if this side of the frame is moving and this side of the frame is not you know this side's flexing up and down this side's not this could put pressure on this right here i just really don't know i will be putting that 4x4 cross member on the back side of the frame here. Then we'll have that cross member that's still right here. And then I have this guy right here. Now, because of my concern with the design of this uh, track bar brace, I actually went online and I asked you guys what you thought of the design, uh, how you'd make it better, uh, how it's wrong, how it's bad. Correct me if I'm wrong. Just tell me what's wrong. So I reached out, made a post, and a ton of you guys commented. It was super awesome to hear from all you guys. And I got everything from looks good dude to back half the truck. So <laughs> there's a really big spectrum uh, of comments that I got, but there was a lot of super good ones, some specific ones that uh, actually were really good, made me think about uh, the design and how the frame flexes and how things work. It just really helped out a lot. So I took a couple of uh, your guys' ideas and looked around the shop and found stuff that I had for free and that I could use and I think this design is way better and I'm way more happy with the way it is. So let's go check it out. So this is version 2.0. What we changed instead of going directly to this mount on the frame right here. So all the force going back and forth this way from this track bar and the axle movement was going up to one point right here pushing and pulling on the frame just in this one spot right here. So now uh, I made the top bar. So we got basically a frame brace, like kind of a cross member that goes directly from one side of the frame to the other side of the frame. And then basically made a radius arm in a way uh, welded directly to this bar. So now the movement from the track bar here, pushing and pulling on this is actually pushing and pulling equally across, well, I don't know about equally, I'm not, I'm not engineer, but it's gonna be pushing and pulling across the whole frame, uh, putting the stress from this side all the way to this side. This is gonna make it way stronger, in my opinion. And I stuck with Heim joints because I don't have this whole frame boxed. And uh, so when the frame twists, which is gonna be movement up and down and a little bit side to side probably, uh, the Heim joints are going to allow the frame to twist independently from each other, at least a little bit. If I hard solid mounted uh, everything on this side, so we got our frame plate right here that I did to reinforce uh, in the last video, uh, the whole broken cracked frame thing. So all this area on the other side of where it is boxed and reinforced, we're going to leave this area open to cracking and fatigue because this side is super strong, all tied in. And if I made it solid all the way across, it would be prone to cracking in the spots that are not boxed. So this will allow it to move a little bit independently of each other, also giving it the rigidity side to side, which we need on this track point route right here. I think it's kind of best of both worlds without actually going through and boxing the whole frame for linking and removing the gas tank and putting it up here. Okay guys, that's gonna be it for this video. We got the whole rear end all buttoned up. Couple other things that we're gonna be doing that will be probably in the next video. Swapping out the Heim joints, Heim joints for Enduro joints from Barnes Royal Drive. That's gonna make this thing ride a lot smoother, softer, and not as rough. And we're gonna be replacing our Hydro Assist Ram, which the Heim joints on the Ram currently is so loose, so sloppy. It's contributing to my steering kind of being wandering all over the place. It definitely doesn't help. So if you want to check out all the parts that were used in this video and in the future videos and building this truck, make sure you check out Barnes Four Wheel Drive. Get 10% off. Use the link in the description. Uh, automatically give you 10% off. Or use the code MUDDYBEARDS at checkout. Also give you 10% off. If you want to check us out on social media, 
at muddybeards 4 x 4 We got a website, shirt, stickers, stuff like that, muddybeards4x4.com. Hopefully tomorrow, the day before this video comes out, we will be out testing this out on some actual rocks. That is the goal. Hopefully I can get this thing buttoned up tonight and edit this video tonight so that I can go camping tomorrow and go test this thing out. Anyways, we'll see you back here in the garage.